Welcome back to another episode of Azure DevOps. During our last episode, we have created a free DevOps account, used a hello world script and ran it from a pipeline. That doesn't make much sense, I know. In this episode, we will be looking at creation of a pipeline using YAML file. Then we are going to create a service connection for Azure. And also we are going to use Azure DevOps pipelines to deploy Azure resource. I will try to explain the concepts during the exercise. Let's get started then. And as you see, I have already logged in to my Azure DevOps account, which is Das Learning New. Previous episode, I didn't have the parallel quota and I did fill up a form. Now that quota is enabled for this account, I can use this account going forward now. This is my organization, which is Das Learning New. And this is Das Learning, just a project. So I can go to this project. And if you remember last time, we initialized our repo, used a sample script, which was hello world. For this episode, I have created a few files and I'll explain each and everything what I'm going to do for this episode. In this episode, I have written a PowerShell or Azure PowerShell also. I will upload the scripts to my GitHub repo and I'll share the link. So basically, I'm going to create a storage account using Azure PowerShell and these are the name. So the first command is creating the resource group. The second command is creating the storage account. Then I'm getting the context of that storage account. Then I'm going to create a container inside that. And finally, I'm going to upload a file. I'll show you the file also. In data files, I've created a folder called data files. Here you have a sample text file. It can be anything. You can upload anything. So that's all. Let me create a pipeline using a YAML file. I have created a YAML file, just a sample one. You can check or maybe Google as your DevOps YAML pipeline. You will get plenty of options or maybe documentation. You can take a look, but this is very simple. I'll explain. So let me just create a pipeline and while creation, I'll try to explain it. I have pushed all the changes and it's already here in the pipelines. The YAML is there in scripts. I do have the PowerShell and in data file, I do have the text file, which I want to upload. Now let me go to pipelines. We are going to create a new one. So click on new pipeline. You will get few options like you can use Azure Git or Bitbucket, GitHub, whatever you like. Last time we used the classic editor and started with an empty job and we used the graphical user interface to interact with it or maybe to update the pipeline. This time we are going to use Azure repo. So click on this. Yeah, this is my repo. And you can have two options starter pipeline you can start a new one or you can use existing pipeline yaml file if you have it so for my case i already have it so let me take that you need to provide the path as well so this is pipelines devops episode 2 that's fine click on continue and what you can do click on show assistant this was a bash script which we used for our hello world maybe we can change it now I'll just remove these lines and let me take PowerShell for this time. Oh, before that, let me explain this. If you remember our last episode, we used Ubuntu latest in the YAML declarative way. You can write the same thing in YAML, which looks like something like this. Ubuntu latest I've taken. And now inside the steps, I need to take PowerShell. Indeed, this one. And you can have two options, file path and inline. Inline means you can write all the commands or codes here itself. Or if you have already created or maybe uploaded your script to the repo, you can use that also, which will be file path for me. You can click on this small I button. Here you will find a default system directory. That's a predefined variable set by Azure DevOps. You can put this. That means let me just copy it somewhere else. So that's my home directory. This dash learning repo, this will be my home directory and inside that. So I need to take the script, right? So let me rename and copy this so that there should not be any mismatch or spelling mistake and provide a slash. That means from my home directory, go to scripts, then again a slash and name of this file. Let me rename and take that as well. That's it. And we can pass any arguments that's not needed for this episode. And I do not need any advance. I can click on add. Now that is added. Simply you can save and run. That means it will save your file in the YAML and it will try to run your pipeline. And let's see what happens. And commit, you can put any message, maybe set up PowerShell in pipeline, something like that. Save and run. My job is going to start now. Indeed, it will fail and I'll explain why. As you see, the PowerShell has failed. So it is saying this command is not found because I have used a normal PowerShell. I need to use Azure PowerShell. And another thing was missing. I did not have any authentication in that. Let me open it. So in my script, I do not have any authentication created here. 
in order to create an authentication system what we use in azure devops that is called service connection let me go to project setting from the bottom and scroll a bit down from the left side panel and you'll see service connections and service connection is basically is the best or secure way to create a connection with multiple services there are multiple options once you click on create service connection you can see you can create connection with say bitbucket github jenkins and many other things for us i'll go with azure resource manager click on next here you will find couple of options and i would like to go with service principle manual and i'll explain why if you click on service principle automatic your user account has to have access on the azure ad to create a service principle for you and maybe your user account doesn't have enough permission on azure ready to create that and many other problems and we can create a service principle prior to create the connection itself and if you were wondering what is service principle i'll paste a link of another episode in my channel which will explain what is service principle and how to create it how to get the access id and access key that's all are there you need to get the id key and tenant id so select this service principle manual click on next and here you have to provide few things first of all subscription id that means your azure subscription id where i can find it let me go to azure portal and here i do have a subscription and i need to take that id you can click on this copy button of subscription id and paste it on the devops window here is subscription id any subscription name that's fine the learning shop something like that and here you need to have the service principle application id let me copy that here is my service principle or application id and i need to put the key let me copy that bring it here and i need to provide the tenant id also the tenant id is your azure ad id and you will find all these details in my service principle video click on verify and indeed my verification is successful now you need to provide a name for this connection maybe thus learning episode 2 any description that's optional and here is a little check box you can check so grant access permission to all pipelines that means you can use this authentication mechanism from any pipeline in your project or maybe organization click on save verify and save and now that's great now let me go to my project let me go to pipelines again and my last pipeline did fail click on this one click on edit i'll do one thing i'll change the pipeline name and weirdly microsoft didn't change the console yet you need to go to triggers and here i can change my name and maybe episode 2 something like that save come back to pipelines again now my pipeline name has been changed click on edit again and this time instead of powershell i am going to use and let me copy this file path which will be needed i'll remove all these lines now search for powershell again so you can see as your powershell is there click on this one here you need to provide your subscription so that subscription is your service connection choose this one script file path the path which i have given earlier as well so i need to provide that path i'm pasting that here yeah that's done and i'm not bothering about i have mistakenly selected inline yeah this should be the path and i do not need any other arguments and this as your subscription or your service connection will work for you as an authentication mechanism you need not to provide any authentication or maybe secret id and key to your code itself click on add and hopefully this should work this time and somehow some extra quotations are there i need to remove it yeah now my code is ready click on save any commit message you want to provide default is fine click on pipelines again i'll explain about triggers manual and automatic going forward in next episodes job is going to start let me check click on job somehow it gave an error let me check okay i think i didn't provide the version very well let me just go to the pipeline this can happen so once you have saved your code if you want to get that ui again click on this little settings button of that task and indeed i didn't specify a version you can click on latest installed version that's fine with me click on add yeah this time it should work fine click on save so let me go to episode 2 pipeline and it is running now and this time hope for the best and let me check my resource group there should not be anything it should be empty click on the resource group inside your subscription click refresh nothing should be there let me go to now it has started it has created the resource group and let us wait for other steps to complete that means yeah all are complete let me just take a look on the output on my pipeline 
and these all are my output so it has uploaded my script and let me switch back to my azure portal click on refresh it might take uh, it appeared click on this resource group here is my storage account click on this scroll to containers from the left side click on your container and here is my text file now that's done and one more interesting thing is i'll i'll show you this account and my azure portal or azure account is completely different that means my azure tenant or ad is different than this one so there are two different logins which i am using one is for azure devops another is for my personal azure account so by this way you can connect to any of your cloud provider or anything like that you can create a service connection and that will authenticate for you in this exercise what we have done we have created a resource group we have created a storage account and a container and we have uploaded a simple file now let us think of a scenario where we want to use automated deployments for example maybe we can treat this text as my application code and we want to set up something whenever there is a change on this file we want to trigger our build job that means it should upload again to my pipeline or maybe this episode is already long enough maybe we can divide it in another episode and i will meet you in the next episode thanks for watching see you in the next video